All right, so let's go to the history matching tab and go to FW matching. So FW is the fractional flow for water and we will do matching here. This is the FW matching for the tank because we want to do prediction, we need to perform matching for well level. So click this one well, we have well one and well two. First, we go to well one. Okay, so this is the fractional flow constructed from the historical data. This one, these data points. And before going to the prediction, we need to match these data points with this blue line. Okay. And we can easily do that by pressing this one, regress. Regress on default variables. All right. Okay, so we have completed the matching. So now the data points and the simulation are matched. And we need to do that also for well two. Safe regression results in well relative permeability parameters. Yes. This is the condition for well two. Regress. Okay, so now we have completed the matching, the fractional flow for well one and well two. And we can do prediction starting from now. Okay. Yes, safe, safe regression results in well relative permeability parameters. Okay, it's okay for the tank for well one already match, well two already match. Finish, open well one. You can see now we have relative permeability parameters inputted. Residual saturation and point and the exponent. You can check the plot. A value must be entered here. Doesn't matter because we are done in this section, okay? All right, yeah, if you want to show the plot, you can also input the data for gas breakthrough in this section, okay? But we can skip it for the time being. All right, so we have completed the history matching, the analytical method, right? We complete the matching by adding water influx to the reservoir model. And we also achieve very good matching for graphical methods. We generate the energy plot showing that the water influx or water drive is the dominant drive mechanism for our reservoir. And we also perform matching for well level, the fractional flow matching. And now we are ready to do prediction. So let's go to production prediction, prediction setup. Okay, so from here for the predict, we can open the drop down menu. And in this case, we will choose production profile from or production profile using well models. And for the options, we check the use fractional flow model. Okay, and then for the prediction step size, automatic and for the prediction end in this case we will end the prediction at 1st january 2015 okay for prediction start we will start the prediction from the end of production history all right so we have production history and of course we will start the prediction I recommend you to start the prediction at the end of production history and you can end the prediction at this date or at your preference date. Okay, so we can click done. All right. And now again, production prediction, this one, well type definition. Okay, you see here we have two history wells story from well one and from well two. 
okay to the prediction we will create a prediction well which is actually the same well so well one this is for history well but now i will create a prediction well version for well one and prediction well version for well two okay so click this one well one okay if i click done i have this new well which is actually this well but used for prediction okay that's what we do in embal software okay so i will move this first okay and also i can also add second well click done move the second well for a prediction well all right okay so we can go to the first well all right you can see we have set up well type oil producer okay and we have inflow performance more inflow outflow performance okay let's be careful here we start with inflow performance and for inflow performance model we will use straight line productivity index plus fogel below the bubble point pressure okay and fractional flow model we will use this one use rel perm one okay but we need to edit the data okay all right here we have rel perm from cori function okay and then hysteresis no modified no and here we can copy the relative permeability results obtained from the previous fractional flow matching okay so click copy and you select this one material balance from well one click copy now i extract the relative permeability results from fractional flow matching for well one I extract that and distribute the data, the results to this table. Okay, residual saturation, the endpoint, and also the exponent. All right, so far so good. Done. Do you wish to copy the water breakthrough from the copied relative permeability curve? The water saturation at 15%, yes. Okay, and here we have productivity index. I will input 15 stock tank barrel per day per PSI. Test water cut zero. All right. And the other, let's leave it as per default. Okay. Done. Inflow performance for well one. And we do that for the second well. Or I can prefer using rel perm two. Copy from well two. Okay, and I will put the productivity index to be ten stock tank barrel per day, per psi. Validate. All right. Now go back to well one. Check more inflow. Let's leave the other or leave this step as per default. And now we go to outflow performance. All right. So from here, we have outflow performance selection, either using constant flowing bottom hole pressure or tubing performance curves. Okay. And in this case, I've prepared the tubing performance curves. I've prepared the VLP, the vertical lift performance, and I will put the results, the prepared VLP or the prepared TPC to embal i click edit all right and now i will import okay i just prepare the data and i will press import okay all right and from here i will select this one open okay finish all right so automatically populated the VLP data, all right? This one, in my opinion, is the most troublesome, the most complex section of the embal, 
but you can easily create this data using well modeling software like Prosper. You create several scenarios, scenarios for wellhead pressure, or in this case, manifold pressure, water cut, GOR, and you will extract this one, the flowing bottom hole pressure from the scenarios. And I can plot. This is the plot. I have the IPR and I have the VLPs. All right, finish. Done. Okay, done for first well. Or I now will complete the well two. Edit, import this one. Done. Plot. All right. Finish. Finish. Done. Okay, so I've created two prediction wells, which are actually well one and well two. Okay, but here I have history well, history well one, history well two, and now I create prediction well one and prediction well two. Okay, so we go back to the production prediction well schedule. Okay, I will make the start time from the end of history, which is 31st, okay, December 2002 for both wells. Copy and paste, and I will end the prediction at 1st January 2015 for both wells. Okay, number of wells, one and one. This one for prediction well one, and this one for prediction well two. Downtime zero, no shut in, no downtime, okay. Click done. Okay, we are almost there. Reporting schedule, automatic. All right. Okay, now for production constraints, we check. Okay, for the production or the prediction production and constraints, I've prepared the condition. I copy the data and paste it here. Paste table. Okay, let me do this manually. All right, starting from the 31st December of 2002, the manifold pressure or wellhead pressure is 1000 PSIG. Click done, go back to production prediction. Now I can do run prediction, calculate. So you can see I start the prediction from this date, 31st December of 2002. And now I have the results for tank pressure, oil recovery, oil rate, gas rate, water rate, liquid rate, the average oil rates or the average rate for oil, gas, water, and liquid, and the other results, including voidage balance, vessel for voidage, downhole for volume, and others including also aquifer in, in flux, of course. So if we go to the end of the table, the final oil recovery factor at 1st January 2015 is 36%. Okay, let's make the plot. Start from history, tank pressure, also show the simulation results for tank pressure. And what about the prediction? Tank pressure. Okay, so this is the profile for the forecasted tank pressure. You can see we get increased pressure here. Maybe this is because of the water influx. Okay. And after that, the pressure declines again. Remove all. I want to show the history. Oil recovery factor is not in history. 
but I can show the simulation, the oil recovery factor from simulation. This one, you see at the, this one, at the end of the production history, the final oil recovery factor is 21%. And I do the prediction, I do the forecasting, and I will show the recovery factor, this one. Okay, so now at 1st January of 2015, I can achieve oil recovery factor of 36%. I can also show the oil flow rate, this one, production from well one, production from both well one and well two. And what about the prediction, oil rate, Okay, so this is the forecasted oil rates from well one and well two. Okay, yeah, you can also show the other results. Remove all like water influx or aquifer influx, prediction, aquifer influx. Okay, and I will overlay with tank pressure and also for the prediction, okay? So as you can see here, the pressure drops significantly because of new contribution from well two and the aquifer influx increase at that time, okay? Due to this one, due to the decreased pressure at reservoir site, it will increase the driving force so that the aquifer influx increase at that time. All right. So this, this is the thing that you can do using this case. Okay. So you perform combination of well one and well two to get the overall production history. And then you add also with information regarding the reservoir pressure obtained from your monitoring well, and then you perform history matching for reservoir level, and also you do fractional flow matching for well level, well one and well two, and then you input the VLP, input the IPR, okay, you input the nodal analysis, and you also create the, or you also input the production constraint, production scheduling, and yeah, you just do the prediction, the forecasting. And this is the results you will get. Okay, so it's very easy, right? All right, so I think we can call it a day. Okay, this is the final results that we get. Okay, so that's all. I hope this video is useful. I hope this video will stimulate you to study further using this MBAL software, which is very, very useful. And see you again in the next MBAL videos. Thank you.